She opened up with Rhea Ripley coming down to the ring. So they have uh, they have done what I can't help but notice I said they should do, which is take away the branding of Raw and SmackDown on the women's titles because it's stupid. And every time you do a draft, it's stupid. And so that's what they have done. There are no longer Raw and SmackDown women's champions. On SmackDown, we have the women's WWE champion with a new belt. And on Raw, we now have the women's world champion, which has a new belt. Therefore, every year when they do the draft, it doesn't matter where people go. You're just going to have either the world title or the WWE title, much like we now have the WWE undisputed title, which is funny because it's not, and the WWE world title. So Rhea came out. She's super over. People chanting her name, chanting mommy. She gets her new belt. And then Dom comes out in immediate hatred for Dom. And out comes Cody. And they show footage of what happened with Cody and Dom last week. And Cody says, you know, I'd love to face Brock at Money in the Bank, but he's a coward. He's not going to show up. So you know what, Dom? How about we wrestle at Money in the Bank? And Dom says, I'm not afraid of anybody. I'd embarrass you like I did last week. But he does not answer the challenge. And so Cody said, listen, it's a yes or no question. Are we going to wrestle or not? And so Rhea jumps in and says he accepts. So it is Cody Rhodes versus Dom. Not producer Dom, mind you, but Dominic Mysterio had money in the bank. And I am excited for that match. I am. You know, I don't think that having new belts changes anything when it comes to the branding because the belts look different. So we're still going to have to have that silly, if they wanted to do it, exchange of belts in the middle of the ring. They don't have to exchange the belts. Why not? Why would they have to exchange the belts? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, what brand the world title is on. It doesn't matter what brand the WWE title is on. But in theory, it's stupid to have the Raw Women's Champion spend a year exclusive to SmackDown. That's stupid. So having it a WWE title and a world title, it doesn't matter at all what brand they're on. SmackDown, but did they not want to align the belts so they look like the men's and women's but world it doesn't matter. It's look just, like each other? Nah, it's just the world title looks like the old big gold belt and the WWE title looks like the logo. Uh, does it matter to you? What will no, Vince it doesn't matter at all. Now? doesn't matter. I don't care what, what brand Vince the Winged say? Eagle is on. It should be on both, but I don't care. Cody versus The Miz. Cody, uh, you know, he did a good match with the guy. Bled. I don't even know how. He just started bleeding all over. And uh, Miz tried the skull-crushing finale. Cody reversed it. Crossroads pinned him. And uh, now we look forward to Cody and Dom. Becky came out for a preposterous promo. So we got Money in the Bank coming up. So how do we make Money in the Bank seem important? Well, Becky explains that you fans, she said. I still can't believe I'm, I'm reciting this. You fans have been conditioned to think that the number one person in the company is the champion. But she says, in my opinion, and this is straight out of TNA, the number one person in the company is the person with the power. And who has more power than the person with the Money in the Bank briefcase? And I thought, well, the person with more power than the person with the Money in the Bank briefcase is, in fact, the champion, actually. So she said the briefcase holder had the power to make the champion scared. Trish is scared, but she will be beating Zoe Stark, however, at Night of Champions. Zoe Stark came out. God bless her. You know, national television, live. Uh, she was nervous. Was not a very good promo. Then she did an interview claiming, you know, Becky, you got no personality. The only reason you're over is because somebody broke your face. Everyone's giving her the what treatment. And she says, at Money in the Bank, I'm going to break your face again and make you famous. And this led to Becky versus Chelsea, which uh, I don't know what this means, but the match itself was seven minutes long, but we only saw three minutes of it on television because they immediately went to commercial. And they came back solely for the comeback and the finish, which, of course, was Becky submitting her with the disarmer. We've got a beginning of a long-term storyline here with the Judgment Day. And the story is that Damian Priest is going to be splitting and going babyface at some point. And they're planting seeds every single day. Priest is all excited about Money in the Bank, but Finn is morose. And he glares at Priest as he leaves. We had Priest versus Riddle 
in a Money in the Bank qualifier, 15 minutes. Really good match. These guys were great. And back and forth, Riddle missed the floating bro. Priest grabs him, razor's edge, pins him clean in the middle to qualify for Money in the Bank. And then Imperium came out afterwards, and Priest says, go pick the bones. And so they attack and destroy Riddle to get revenge on Riddle, taking out Baldy, as they call him, last week with the ankle lock. And, uh, and he was not on the show this week, but I believe that it is a worked injury. I don't think he's actually hurt. That's the impression I've been given. Cody did a promo, asked about the Dom match. And, uh, you know, he's still on the finish of the story story. And so no matter what happens, he will not be held back. He will not be kept down. He will finish his story. Nothing is going to knock him off his path. We had an Imperium segment with Sammy and Kevin where apparently I wasn't even aware of this, but all that work building up Imperium week after week after week after week after week, they finally announced the match. This was supposed to be non-title. And so Imperium's like, put the titles on the line, bro. So Kevin's like, sure, we'll put them on the line. He says, let's go do this. And then he notes, I can't wrestle in this T-shirt and shorts. I got to go change into a different T-shirt and shorts. Much like Buddy Wayne once showed up in the building for a street fight and took off his jeans to put on a different pair of jeans. That's weird. Sorry. It's a street fight, brother. Ricochet faced Bronson Reed. And Shinsuke came out to watch three guesses. This was just weird. So Bronson catches Ricochet on a dive. And he throws him into Shinsuke Nakamura at ringside. Bronson then throws the dude into the ring, and he goes up top for the tsunami, and Nakamura attacks him for the DQ. And this finish was so lame that the fans booed the babyface for kicking the heel, leading to a a DQ. So Ricochet and Nakamura yelled at each other. Bronson jumped Nakamura from behind. Nakamura and Ricochet were, like, so close together arguing that when when, uh, Nakamura got jumped, they they shoot headbutted each other. They were dead. But they got up, they gave the double superplex to Bronson, and uh crowd sure did like that to the he point they said something I can't say here oh. on the air. Sammy met with Kevin. He said, dude, what's up lately? You're always blowing up. Why are you a 10 every day? To which Kevin replied, I'm a six! This, this Kevin character is great. This is like the best Kevin Owens I think there's actually ever been. Uh, He's he's always always agitated. Yes, this new amped up Kevin at all times where Sammy's trying to be the calm voice of reason is fantastic. And Ricochet wanted a match with Bronson next week, but Pierce said actually he's already got a match with Ricochet. And uh, Ricochet is angry. Or no, Ricochet wants a match with Bronson. Pierce says he's already got a match with Nakamura. Ricochet's mad at Nakamura for interfering. And then Nakamura says, listen, I will succeed where you failed. And when I'm done, you can, you can, you know, pick the bones, which is their new deal. Then we had this freaking segment with Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. Mm. You know what I had a guy tell me the other day? He What's goes, that? how come you hate the fans singing Seth's song? But you don't have a problem with this them singing Chris Jericho's song. Oh, I do. And it's like, well, Chris Jericho's song is great. No, this ain't not. even a song. Will you stop? It's just, oh, uh, whatever. And they just won't shut up about it. At least it. Seth is a baby face. And you know what? You know what, everybody? Mark What's my that? words. Mark my mm-hmm. words. Mm-hmm. This singing Seth's song is going to be the new what? That's what it's going to be. The new what? Where... These people are going to come out and they're going to try and do promos with Seth and the people are just going to sing and sing and sing and sing and sing and you're never going to get to the point and it's going to drag on forever. Have they done this yet, Brian? They did it last night. I want to thank you so much for putting that in everybody's heads as a thing that they can continue to do to be annoying. That's what's going to happen. You know what happened here? Here was the whole point of the promo, okay? Finn is mad that seven years ago they were doing a match 
He was supposed to start his run as a universal champion, but Seth legitimately injured him with a buckle bomb into the thing. He tore every muscle in his upper body. Finn missed a year of his career, and he was never the same again. Mania. And now he's mad, and he wants to do the same thing to Seth. And Seth's response, oddly, is, well, I hope the the tough guy shows up and not this wimp. Because <laughs> I guess he wants a challenge or whatever. And uh, how long did it take me to say that? Like, uh, you know, 30 seconds at most? Well, this thing went on and on and on mm. and on and on mm. and on and on and on and on to the point where the next two matches, Raquel and Shayna and Chad Gable and Eric, whether you wanted to see them or not, the fact of the matter is they both got their time drastically cut because the interview segment went on forever. So I'm sure that Raquel and Shayna and Chad and Eric and Ivar and and uh, Super Porky and Maxine, I'm sure they're all thrilled with the fans just singing this song nonstop as they prepare all afternoon for a match and are told, sorry, you got to cut it down to two minutes because we're, we're just running out of time. My God, though, did they really need both of those segments? The most important person out of anybody in that mix is Raquel Rodriguez at this point in the game, and then he cut her match short. You could have done the wackiness with Chad and Maxine and all them next week or at another time. Well, Shayna rolled up Raquel. A stupid finish. <laughs> so it's stupid. Incredibly stupid. Ronda gets on the apron in front of the referee. Raquel begins fighting her on the apron in front of the referee. This allows Shayna to roll her up, and then Ronda pushes on the buttocks of Shayna for leverage to, to pin her. I'm like, dude, God help me. I You know, referees never had to be Ivy League Mensa members, you know, in pro wrestling, but at this point in the game, every single promotion, AEW, WWE, New Japan, you know, the major promotions, just treat them like trash. They're garbage and they get in the way. It's just ridiculous. Then we had Chad Gable and Eric. Maxine is now in a wrestling singlet, and she gave a power slam on the floor to Valhalla, which distracted Eric. Chad rolled him up and pinned him. Again, two minutes, time cut, because of all the fans singing. Finn was giving JD a pep talk, so they're moving in that direction. JD is going to join. Actually, what will probably happen long-term is JD is going to replace Priest, would be my guess. And Priest showed up, and essentially, Finn's like, you know, if I win this title at Money in the Bank and you win the briefcase, like, you're not going to cash on in on me, right? And Priest is like, I can't believe you'd even ask. Of course not. But he says, you know, from now on, you need to keep your word to me. Which I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm sure something happened somewhere. So uh, off they go to Money in the Bank. Seth did a promo, thankfully backstage. No one sang. And then the main event was great. Kevin and Sammy beat Imperium when Sammy hit the Blue Thunder Bomb for the pin on... Uh, What's his face? Not Gunther. Not Gunther. <laughs> Ludwig Kaiser. Kaiser. But yeah, this match was great. Everybody was great. Hard chops, great wrestling, big near falls. Excellent main event. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate wow. you, Wow. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow, look at that, everybody. Holy wow. smokes. That qualifies. That's Prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> <laughs>
If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.